The problem is, is on our social media, like since he's been doing the nappy changes, the amount of comments is like, oh, he's a single dad. <laughs> she must have died from <laughs> childbirth, mother, and things like that. Like, honestly, is hard for me as that a mother. That was a lot. And, and I'm like, I'm li literally just click on the video next to that one. There I am. Exactly. Right? Anyway, so this video happens, and then he's like, you, you, all you care about on this video is that you were mentioned. You're, that's a bit narcissistic. And I turned around and I was like, are you freaking Way kidding me? Way to set me? a light to the flames, Barney. <laughs> are you kidding me? We're watching. We're awesome, eating at lunch. I've just got off an 18-hour flight and you're like, let's sit down and watch a video about me. And you're calling me a narcissist. I wanted you to have a, a look at the first cut of the video that I did with I Rocket. told my mum You can give me a thumbs this. up. I told my mum about this and she went, well, to be fair, you're both a bit narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, I'll give you that, fair enough. <laughs> and that is why we're together. That's right, baby. Shh, don't tell mum. <laughs> Hello and, and welcome, welcome to Don't, don't Tell Mum. My name's Barney. And I'm Jamie. This is the third most listened to parenting podcast in... In, in Estonia! Estonia! You know what I'm going to ask you. Where is Estonia? Have you ever been to Estonia? It's near Hungary, isn't it? It's near Hungary. Do you know something about geography that I don't know? Because I don't have a foggiest, the foggiest. Why are you asking me? Why are you... Because I need to be educated and you are the person to do that, Jamie I Lisa. I have my braces in. I'm so sorry, guys. You're seeing me in this. I left like, my braces in. I'm very tired. I've just got back from Indonesia. Yes, everyone's here. And <laughs> it was incredible. I played at Sundays in Uluwatu for three days straight. Bali, Bali, Bali. And the rain. I didn't realise the summer was rain season. I thought January was rain season. So, like, if you think about the seasons when it comes to, like, Indonesia, Australia, all that stuff, you just got to flip them. So their winter is, like, June to August, September time. Mm -hmm. And their summer is January. So, like, they have a barbecue at Christmas time because it is so freaking hot. Wow. If you're Australian and that is total and utter bullshit, please let me know in the comments because yeah. I have no idea if what I just said was correct. That's why I assumed because I know that Australians always say they have super hot Christmases and they don't eat like turkey and all the trimmings. They're like, it's too hot to eat that shit. Oh, I mean, to be honest, when I walked through Doha to um, through the transfer, Qatar, yeah. So I got to Qatar, landed, and instead of having like you know the airport thing that comes up to the door, okay, to so, like through, the connector that yeah, puts, we had yeah, to go yeah. down the stairs and get <gasps> on the coach. You had to go outside, but when we got down, the coach wasn't there, so we were all standing on the stairs waiting for the coach, and everyone on the pla plane like we were all there being like oh my god the heat just like opened the door and it was 4 a.m in the morning 4 a.m so this is what i'm that saying was cool the middle east is painful mate i was like how can anyone live here and i had like just a little jumper on and a tea dress like i mean you had a jumper on a tiny no but it was like a tiny like little blouse and i was like oh my god i'm dying blouse, huh? i was there jamie wearing for, blouses on the plane mm. i was there for like Probably five minutes, and I thought to myself, I'm going to faint. This is crazy hot. I mean, yeah. It was I worse than Vegas. I, I made a joke on social media like a while ago about like being in Saudi Arabia yeah. and it being 48 degrees there. And like when you're in the sun or you step outside and you walk for a little bit, let's say you walk for two minutes, three minutes, like you've in a game, you know how like your health bar goes down. I can feel my health bar just reducing yeah, as I'm walking through 100%. Saudi. I'm like, I'm slowly dying. <laughs> And then, I love yeah. how you like turn it into a game. <laughs> Your brain is like the game. I'm in gaming mode. You know what I mean? Like well, that's I'm what it is. In Barocca mode. You are because we it aren't is sponsored season. by Barocca, but I really do think I've got a vitamin D deficiency. No B12 deficiency. Not vitamin, vitamin D. Explain vitamin. why do you think you have a B12 deficiency? Because today, I mean, it is wedding season, and I am doing about two, three weddings a week. It's wedding season, baby, and. It's so, you need to get fit. You need to get marathon ready for wedding season if you are a DJ. Five hours of just... Well, <laughs> I, I played six on Yo. the second day. I played six on the last day, on the beach day. And then on the first day, I think I played four. And that was like our chilled night. And everyone was like hype. And they were like, oh my God, what's the next two we're going to be? And it was mad. We had such a good time, but my body is broken. Like, I feel like I've done a marathon. Even though I did go for a run this morning, I was like, I need to get up and go. Because if I don't exercise, I, I, can't, I can't function mentally, physically. It's so enduring. And then this morning, I had to have a fucking ECG, which was to check my heart rate because I'm getting heart pains. <laughs> 
my goodness. And it's it's because it's wedding season. It's wedding Anyone season. Anyone that works in weddings and who's also a parent, and funnily enough, everybody on that job had a young baby. Like the band, they had a six-month-old. The wedding planner, she had a six-month-old. And Damn. I was like, oh, I have a two-year-old. And they were like, oh, wow. You're an old soul for them. <laughs> no, but to them, they were like, wow, that's hard. And I was like, I mean, it's hard having a newborn. Toddlering. Toddlering is the toughest stage. I mean, okay, speaking of toddlering, what's new, with, Ro- what's new with the rock star? Yeah. Um, big boy bed. Big boy bed. He's in a big boy bed. We should have turned that into a YouTube episode, but I, know. I was away. Pu- and pulling, like, it's it's been difficult creating, like, well, let's address the elephant in the room, first and foremost, and I'm not talking about my ass. because That's feel a good ass. video, actually. Sorry to break it, but, like... Sorry we to break could it. Actually, You're about to break the internet. No, we could actually do a video tonight of the whole night routine in his new big boy bed as an episode. We can do that. I Let's not film bath episode. time, though. Ew. Let's not film that. Okay. I mean, you've all seen BBC News right now with the oh, few things. Oh, don't even. She went there. I she went there. Went there. I was we so can't trust. Yesterday. We can't trust anyone nowadays. I he he like talks news, bad news about criminals, and he's a criminal himself. Like Man. that is how bad that is. Like we have been looking at. They need to vet everyone now. The police officers because of that. Isn't others. it mad? Like C- CRB oh, checks everyone. have to be for like every job. Every, every job, job in the public eye should have a CRB. But oh, that's the 100%. thing. Like if he got CRB checked, it would have come out fine because you didn't. Know, people didn't know. No, they it's not like check, he's a. Don't you have to check? No, but he's not like a an offender. Like a CRB check is to cl- check if you have like a previous criminal record. Like he didn't have a criminal record. It's the stuff that was on his laptop. Anyway, I don't want to air yeah. any more don't, about don't, this information. Let's not go into it because everyone knows. And everyone can find it if you haven't seen whatever it. his freaking name is. If Hugh, Hugh American. something. He's a bellend. Basically, if you're an American, we have a broadcaster who has. Done so we some are going to keep talking about. No, it. I'm just going to quickly cover <laughs> okay. it. Being like, we have a broadcaster in the UK who's a very very famous broadcaster, and he has done something really really bad. And the problem is, is the BBC let they knew about it and they let him still air his shows. Are you sure about that? Yeah, 100%. they they knew. Yeah, that he, that he had, had that stuff on yeah, his laptop. Yeah, the BBC head of the BBC went on the news yesterday talking about why they kept his contract because what? they didn't have actual proof, even though he was being investigated at the time. So they so, they just they just rode the innocent until proven guilty, right? Which is kind of what you have to do as an employer. But now the head head of BBC, I think, like the I don't know who runs it, the head head, he is there now starting to talk about maybe getting money back that they paid him during that time. Oh, because it could have mad. been avoided. I mean, okay, yeah, the can of worms has been opened. Have you heard about this freaking Dutch volleyball player? That's in the Olympics right now. No. Mate, this is insane. There is a Dutch volleyball player right now. Don't know his name. I can Google it. Um, but he is currently competing for Netherlands at the uh, at the Olympics in Paris. And he is a convicted child. Mm. When he was 19, he flew to England and mm. did things with a 12-year-old. <gasps> Got convicted, admitted to it, pled guilty... Got prison four if years. Guilty. If you plead guilty, plead, pled you guilty, so has a criminal record. Did four years in prison, came out, and now he's competing in the Olympics, representing his country. And he's not allowed to be to live or like to be housed in any of the Olympic areas because for fear people are going to attack him. The Olympics are kind of like protecting him. He doesn't have to do any journalism interviews. He just goes in. I mean, I get that people are allowed a second chance, but when it involves kids, oh my goodness. Also, can but yeah, let's let's escape this. So uh, I'll address the elephant in the room. Is that last week we didn't actually have a podcast episode go out, but you commented and like wrote up a thing on social media. Mm-hmm. So if any of you didn't catch that, essentially what happened is while I was in Saudi Arabia, me and Jamie did like a digital podcast using uh, <laughs> software and it just went horribly wrong the whole time. Barney like <laughs> stormed off. This can cause Ask recording Barney issues. Ask all Close. other browsers. Yeah, see there's another Riverside, but it's telling me hold on until this, record- this recording is uploaded and it's got, it's on 97%. So give me one second. Are we recording right now? Now you're recording. Yeah, yeah it says you're recording, recording oh now. Oh, God. <sighs> oh, hurry up. Can this other one just upload? So where are we going to have to go back from? That was a really funny bit as well. Time. Barney, like, <laughs> stormed off <laughs> offline. He And I was sitting there, and it's so funny. I have a... 
a picture. Actually, I could actually grab the picture because I still have the footage. And I'm there with my heart glasses on, like going like this. <laughs> it was, was like, funny. Waiting for you to come back on because you were like, this fucking no, I like... actually thought it was a really funny episode, like the stuff we spoke about. But my computer kept like running out of memory, even though I had memory. For some reason, the technical issues, the quality of the visuals that were being recorded was bad. I mean, like, think about it. I'm like, a, I'm an eight hour plane journey away from Jamie. So like the signal was crappy. We were talking over each other. It was just hard because the you, signal was slow. yeah. And you were like, "We're not, we're not doing it like this." So you already came into it with like a negative. I don't pretense. like doing digital podcasts. I like doing them in person. Yeah, and I get that, but at the same time, he's he was he's away for two weeks, and then he's back, and then he's away again. And I'm I was away in Bali when he was back for the week, and this is literally our only day together before I go to a festival for a gig, and then Barney then flies to Saudi for another two weeks. Three so, weeks three weeks so it's been it's been tough we are I have to admit like it, it has been hard not I'd, I'd say like hard doing the content side of things yeah it's so, like a lot of extra work I mean we we did fairly well and stay very consistent with all of our like short form content like TikTok Instagram shorts things like <laughs> but that last last but, when we, yeah. we did try and record an episode and what we recorded at the end when I when it exports at the end with Riverside we used an, which is normally really really good it recorded 59 minutes of me and it recorded 17 minutes of Barney <laughs> <laughs> so I'm literally talking to a ghost I'm like da 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 and then you hear silence because they oh, didn't record man. any of yours. And that's why I was getting frustrated because I was like, oh my God, we're going to have to record this again and I've got work tomorrow morning and I was just like having a bit of a meltdown and I was like, I just don't think that this is this is a sign that we shouldn't do it. So that's why we skipped a week and we really apologise. And but, that was yeah. our second attempt as well because yes. the day before I was like, for some reason, so this is why we transitioned him while Bar when, I, when I was away was because when Barney was away, he wasn't going down until 9.30. He was crying, crying, crying. I could not get him down. And then fin finally, Barney comes back, does the transition. He goes to bed on time. He wakes up on time. I then come back last night. How many times did you wake up last night, Barney Banks? How many times did I Oh, my goodness, wake yeah. Up it wasn't night? even like waking up. It was like complaining. He was in bed going like, uh, No, it was the bees. Until... The bees. I was he like, was there's no there, bees. He saying there were buzzy bees in his room. He's like, buzzy bees, like pointing at the ceiling. And he has like a star globe thing that like puts stars all over the ceiling. So I was like, fine, I'll turn it off. So I turned it off and I left like a little other light on, like a night light, went and then he was like, oh, I can't stay. And I was like, oh, God. So I got into bed with him. Um, <laughs> and fell asleep until like 3 a.m. in his bed. I don't know how you did that because it's not even big enough for me. That bed's it's tiny. very It's comfy though. Got an Emma mattress for him, by the way, everyone. Everyone who's thinking about transitioning their kid to a single bed, Emma mattresses come, are so soft and great. They come in tiny boxes so they don't take up the whole room. It's not like, yeah. you know. So we had it in the corner of his room for ages, didn't we? Just waiting until we did the transition. Yeah. And... Um, we did it. And how was it, Barney? Walk, walk me through it because I wasn't there. You weren't. So you, you broke the bed down. How long did the break I, of the bed? I basically promised you that when I get home from Saudi, I need to get loads of jobs done around the house because obviously I've not been there for two weeks. And I wanted Jamie to come back with like loads of stuff just having been done so that she doesn't have to worry and be like, oh, God, we got to do this and that. So it's like, right, got back. The day I got back, we kind of chilled. I picked him up from school, did dinner with your mum. Uh, and then he just went to bed normally in his cot. And it started to worry me because you said he climbed out of his cot for the first time yeah. the week previous. Yeah. And I was having a meltdown thinking, oh my God, he's going to climb out of his cot in the middle of the night. Luckily he didn't. So the next day he um, was chilling mm -hmm. and I went upstairs, pulled apart his cot. Right, his cot is in like six sections. There's like a big chunky wardrobe element to it there's the cot itself and there's the wardrobe bit to the on the back of it it's a big old piece of kit and then underneath it the entire base is a single bed so luckily you unscrew it pull all the big bits off and you're just left with a single bed thing and you just chuck mm. a mattress on it done yeah. um sweaty it was because it was like 30 degrees wow and humid I'd rather be in Saudi in 48 degree heat that's dry than 30 degrees and humid in the UK. It's disgusting. Well, we don't get aircon here either. It's and we don't heat. have aircon, no. But at least in Saudi, like it's dry heat. Like you're mm. literally in the middle of the desert. Anyway, mm. I'll stop talking about Saudi. So yeah, transitioned him into his big boy bed. The first night I passed out on the sofa because I was tired from traveling and whatever. So um, he didn't go down to bed until nine because I woke up to your stepdad going, Barney? 
what time's Rocket supposed to go to bed? And I was like, oh, I'll put him down at I like 7 30, Steve. And he just still will question it. Yeah, I was like, he goes down at about 7 30, Steve. I'll put him down in a bit. And he was like, it's nine. And I was like, ah, sorry. So then that night, Rocket really easily went down and was like, chilled. So, oh. yeah, the transition's so he... been good. It's just, it's actually progressively got worse. <laughs> so the night after, he kicked up a bit of a fuss. And then last night, he kicked up a fuss I, until about one in the morning. I guarantee you he will be perfect tonight. Well, not tonight. Tomorrow he'll be perfect because, because I'm you're not there. Not there. <laughs> and you'll be like, he was amazing. And the minute I'm back, it's like he plays up. He's like, he wants mummy smell or something. I don't get it. I also think it's you cave that? and you get him into bed with you when he kicks off a fuss. That is the problem. So don't do that. I just, exactly. Mom's I getting told saw, off, people. But I did see this amazing quote the other day and it was it literally broke my heart. And can I read it to you on the pod? Go on. Because How quickly can you find it? Two seconds because I sent it to you. In tears? You were in like, tears? Oh my God. And we just got an Ollie clock as well to help him with the transition. Ollie the owl, everyone. So when the owl goes beige, like it's morning, they're allowed to get up. And when it's blue, it means it's still nighttime. So when they wake up and they see Ollie the owl is still blue, then they don't get out of bed. But does that stop our son? Fucking hell, does it? He gets up anyway and he's like, Daddy! Hey, ready? Get the tissues, people. I'm ready. A letter from your child who still wants to sleep in your room. Ollie the owl sits next to my bed. He's blue. He's always blue. I know I need to wait for him to be orange, but when I wake up and he's still blue and it feels lonely and somehow colder than before, the room feels so big suddenly and it feels like something is missing. It's my mum. I used to call out when I was much smaller, but now I just wander down the hallway, my cuddly in my hand, dragging on the carpet behind me. I hope they're not mad with me. I do this every night. I know they'd rather I stay in my own bed. I have a sticker chart on the fridge, but it's still empty. Mum somehow always knows I'm coming before I get there. She's usually sitting up ready and I'm relieved when she's not annoyed. I stand in the doorway and she nudges Daddy, who gets up. He doesn't say much, he just makes some noises and gets my blankets and puts them on the mattress. It just stays in their room now, which I like. Sometimes if my baby sister isn't awake, I climb into bed next to her and she pulls the covers back for me and I feel a bit like a baby myself. Everything feels right again. Mummy asks me sometimes in the morning why I keep coming in. I don't know how to put it into words. But just knowing she's with me makes me feel warm inside, like coming home. A bit like solving a problem. She's quite amazing at making the monsters go away. I don't even know how she does it, but just being next to her is enough. Maybe it won't always be so simple, but right now it is. So I let out a deep breath and fall asleep in safety, knowing these moments will become memories of the mattress that's always waiting and a mum who is too. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> no, are you crying? It's just, it's so true. It is so true. And like, it's really hard for a parent to hear your baby cry. Yeah. And like, since he's, since I've had him, I've got more emotionally attached to my baby of than course. even when he was a newborn. Like, I am so emotionally attached to him now. because he has a personality now. So then you like, you link his personality traits to I to miss him. him so much when I'm away from him. And then when I'm with him, like even just hearing him cry, I was like, I want him in the bed with me. And like I you're you were away like, for thought, three weeks. I'm you... like, I want him in the bed with me, sleeping next to me. I thought you were going to say, when I'm away from him, I miss him so much. Then I'm with him. He's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it no, is it's... so hard parenting. It is the hardest job in the world. And the thing is, is you don't realise until you do it and you go, oh my God. Like I, that, that Ryan Reynolds thing I said, you today and he was just like it is freaking chaos we should call this parenting podcast chaos because that our life is is chaos chaos. everyone always like i spoke to my friend today on the phone i was ah this happened or that happened and she's like your life is chaos it's mental our life it's never but i love it you know what you said this yesterday last night though you did say you i just said we do too much we're trying to do too many things at once and we're burning out and then our personal life gets impacted by it because all we then do is talk about work because work is stressing us out or work is taking over or we're working a lot. We The unfortunate thing about our jobs is that it all comes at once. So summer is like crazy busy and winter and the early, early months yeah. of the year is so dead that like we go through these horrendous parts of the year of like January to May is like panic mode. Oh my God, I haven't made any money. There's no work coming in. Da, da, da. And then as soon as June comes around, we're like, 
I have too much work and I have no time at home and how do I parent? So Well, we made the mistake. We have two gears. Yeah, we made the mistake of not going to Bali in January, which would have I mean, it's really... not going to fix all our problems no, going to not Bali. No, it's, it's, but, it, but it separates the year a little bit and gives us time to be yeah, able to I reprocess know. what we've gone through. Mean, yeah. We were so stressed about not working. <laughs> now we've got so much work and now we're like heaving. I've never... I've never done so many weddings in my life. Like, I remember when I was like, oh my God, I've got three weddings this year. I do two weddings a week at the moment, if not three. It's mad, isn't it? It's, it's sick though. It's really cool. And you get to travel to like awesome places. It's just like, when I tell people about our jobs and stuff like that, and they go, oh my God, like it's all right for you because you get to do it. And it's like, the traveling is actually the hardest bit. Yeah. If the work was all local... Like, yeah, it would be a bit more but boring because you don't get to travel. Traveling well. is so much, it's so amazing because you get to see yeah. the world. But the problem is you travel in somewhere and you work immediately for four hours and then go basically get on a plane and go home. So you don't really, it's not like you're exploring that country. Mm. You're literally flying in, getting a taxi to the venue, doing the job, taxi back to the, to the you might stay one night, yeah. taxi back to the airport and then fly home. And so it's just the traveling just takes it out of you. So then you land from Bali after a 20 hour flight and then we go and pick up Rocket from school and then it's like... But it's not like I do anything on. on the plane as well. Like, I don't just sit there watch. Like, I watched only two movies on each flight. One movie on one and one on the other. And they were both eight hours. What You're was not... I doing for the rest of the eight hours? I was Sleeping. working. No, I wasn't. Working. I did sleep for one of them. But... <laughs> Because I needed sleep. It was a bloody day You're not flight. helping your case. You're like, and it's so hard because all I did was watch two movies <laughs> and sleep. <laughs> You're not helping your no. case No, okay, right hang now. on. It was about John Lennon and work Bob Marley. Work is so okay? hard. It was about music, so it's relative. Oh, so it's technically work. It's technically, technically work. work. So, um, know, it's education. We so, Jan, oh, no, wait, let me tell it. you. Right, first, first plane journey, I did my podcast. Because, guys, I'm actually on a radio show now, FM. Ooh, Flex ooh. FM on Mondays. Flex. Um, so you can check it out at 10 a.m. till 12, prime time. It's actually after drive time, but hey, it's when the party it's starts. It's what? The kids, the kids have been dropped off from Wait, school. Wait, what time? And it's 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's like gym time. You dropped off the kids at school, you've gone to the gym. Yeah, Turn and it's like tunes. power, power, power. And I think that's why they put me in at that set list, because it's a little bit melodic, but it is also quite tech tech. You as use well. that word so much. I melodic. I love that Melodic. Word. What does it mean? It means it has a melody. Just means is that what melodic yeah, means? Basically, it's a cooler term than tropical. Tropical. Do you remember when you tried to coin that term? Ah! Right. Talk to me, love. We had a really funny conversation yesterday that I've got to bring up because oh essentially God. what happened was I'm telling this story. <laughs> no, <laughs> essentially, no. Hold on. No, I'm going to tell Who it from both sides. Pissed off, I'm going to tell it from both sides. I promise you. And if I don't, you can interject. So essentially, what happened was we're getting a divorce. We're getting a divorce. <laughs> I I came back from. Uh, Saudi Arabia and I had three days at home with just me and Rocket before Jamie then came home on a Thursday right so I'm at home and I'm thinking oh god this Saturday we have to post a YouTube video and we haven't filmed anything yet I was like oh god okay cool right why don't I just film something with Rocket Jamie's working and then she's got 20 hour flights I'm just going to film something so I was like right we filmed a, we filmed a, uh, a video that's like we found the most expensive box of chocolates in the UK and we bought it and we tried it. It's going to be the worst viewed video. <laughs> She's fucking nasty. Man. No, it's because he's been made such an effort to do his research. Oh, okay. When we make effort in our videos, they do badly. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. There. So, okay, so do this video and then we get sent the first draft. I've hired an editor. Woo! Who's awesome. A Jordan. So Shout out good. to you. Lives in Thailand. He's a legend. Mm -hmm. He sent us back the video, like rough cut because he we wanted to add some bits to it. So he sends this video and uh, Jamie sat with me at the dining table. So I'm like, should we watch it together? So we watch it and it's me and Rocket and we're like, cool, let's go to the shops. Let's buy this box of chocolates. It'll actually be out by the time this episode comes out. So go watch it on the YouTube channel. So we're bombing around and we're trying to find this box of chocolates. and We find it, we pay for it. We build the box because it's kind of build your own thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we get home. Uh, and anyway, I'm showing this to Jamie and it gets to like two thirds of the way through the video. And Jamie goes, you haven't mentioned me in this video yet. <laughs> Hold on. Jamie goes, you haven't, you haven't mentioned me in this video yet. And I was like, well, and then I thought and I went, 
It's a bit of a narcissistic thing to say. And she was like, what do you mean? And I said, oh, I'm showing you a video of me and Rocket. God. And she's like, why haven't you spoken about me? No, what? no. And then she went, but we're watching a video about you, you fucking narcissist. Basically, like, oh. I'll do it from my time, right? Go I'm on, watching love. this video and he, he's literally not mentioned once. We're like halfway through. He hasn't mentioned once where I am because normally when we do videos which and when both of us aren't in it, we go, it's just me today because Barney is in Saudi Arabia which is what you do for a family channel. He's halfway through the show, hasn't mentioned me once. And, and then I'm like, what happens, people, and then what the, happens I mean, at the, the very that, end of the video? And then, and then at the, so the problem is, is on our social media, like since he's been doing the nappy changes, the amount of comments is like, oh, he's a single dad. <laughs> she must have died through childbirth, mother, and things like that. Like it honestly is hard for me as that a mother. That was a lot. And, and I'm like, I'm li literally just click on the video next to that one there I am exactly right anyway so this video happens and then he's like you, you all you care about on this video is that you were mentioned you're <laughs> that's a bit narcissistic and I turned around and I was like are you freaking way to set me? a light to the flames Barney <laughs> Are you kidding me? We're watching. We're nonsense, eating at lunch. I've just got off an 18-hour flight and you're like, let's sit down and watch a video about me. <laughs> and you're calling me a narcissist. I wanted you to have a, a look at the first cut of the video that I did with I Rocket. Told my you, can, you can give me a thumbs this. up. I told my mum about this. And she went, well, to be fair, you're both a bit narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll give you that. Fair enough. <laughs> and that is why we're together. That's right, baby. But you know what? It was very funny because she said this whole thing and I was like, that's a bit narcissistic. This whole like argument ensued and she was like, oh, we're watching a video about you, you fucking narcissist. And uh, we're back and forth thing. And I was like, let's just watch the video because there's only like two minutes left of the video. At the very end of the video, it's like literally... the last clip is like, and Jamie's in Indonesia and it ends. <laughs> And I was like, there's your mention. There's your mention. I was like, people would have turned off by now. <laughs> they don't watch the end bit. And also the cards have already popped up to be like, watch this latest video. Watch the video. next video while I'm like, by, oh. the, way, by the way, I hope you put the I hope you put the um the bookmarks in it when I'm like, check this yeah, video. Yeah, yeah, I do. Stuff. I do. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah. You did that on the last one, yeah. Yep. Good. I'm so glad. Don't worry, your YouTube channel's up and running, baby. Go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So I mean, it has been it has been a bit of a task, and I'm so sorry we did not deliver a podcast last week. So if yeah. you, yeah, we've talked about it a little bit. It we does might talk about it in our next episode bit. as well. That like burnout's a real thing, man. Like because the thing is. A lot of people view us as like content creators and stuff, which we are. And I meet a lot of people that are like, oh, I've seen your TikToks or seen your YouTube, like, you know, full time content creator. And I'm like, no, I have a job as well. Mm. So it's like we double up the amount of work. And then, yeah, eventually that's always going to lead to just like complete burnout. Even though we have amazing teams around us, teams meaning we use a studio, we have an amazing engineer outside right now who's like doing all the audio and the visuals for us, like switching cameras. Checking facts. Checking facts with us as well when we talk absolute garbage. But the thing is, like we do have people helping us along the way, but it's still a lot of work. And then on top of it, I'm trying to do a, have a career as a presenter. You have a career as a DJ and a music producer. We do a lot. Well, that's the thing as well. Is like when you're also like we need to earn cash, right? So it's like yeah, I that's why I have to do weddings. Yeah, ninety percent of our content doesn't make us any money. Like ninety percent of it, at least. More. You think well, more? for you, for me, nearly like it's like ninety nine percent. I make money off. Make money. I make money off of one of my platforms, and I have how many? Six hmm. that we use. I love coming here though because I feel like when we come to the studio, it kind of makes me feel like ah, oh, a little bit more proactive to get stuff yeah, done. Yeah, hundred percent. I definitely prefer We've coming traveled here. here. Even if like even TYX, if Rockets baby. at school, we come like I would. I would prefer to come here, do an, an editing session. I'm meeting people all the time. Like it's a it's a good space to be around because when you have a studio in your own house, you don't really get out much, and it, you feel a bit enclosed between four four walls. So it's good to get out and socialize and network and. Just be around people that yeah. inspire you. Because we just sit at home, like working and making content and doing stuff like that a lot of the time, and but we're quite far boring removed. People right now. So, huh? I said, is this probably boring people right now talking about this? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. But we're trying to explain why we missed last week. So, but cut it, long story yeah. short, that's the story. <laughs> so, on uh, Thursday, Jamie gets back from Bali, and what did we do last night? We went to see Marvel and Wolverine, baby. What? Oh, Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> Marvel and Wolverine. Fact, Jeff. What the hell is wrong with this woman? Uh, but. What? 
my mate was the stunt double in it, which was pretty yes, cool. Yes, our friend Imogen is the stunt double for one of the characters. Don't say the character's name because it's a surprise. But anyway, favourite part of the movie, you can guess mine, purely on the basis of that something happens that I wasn't expecting, that I was like, oh, and then I whooped, and she went, shut up. <laughs> I went, yeah, in the movie theatre, and Jamie was like, shut up, Barney. I just, there's so much 90s throwbacks in the, in this movie. So if you aren't, if you didn't grow up in the 90s, it's probably really hard to understand this movie. I guess it's just if you've seen all the other Marvel films and you know your kind of Marvel history and yeah. nostalgia, then you'd get it. Right, this is your spoiler warning. Right now, skip two minutes if you don't want any spoilers for Deadpool Wolverine. <laughs> also, yeah. you guys in the booth, are you going to kill me if I say something about Deadpool Wolverine? Uh, go ahead, man. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just the bit that I loved that I whooped in the cinema because it's unexpected and it's something that you guys probably don't even care about. There is a bit where Deadpool and Wolverine are about to fight a bunch of people and Wolverine, you see him go like this with his hands and he puts his hand behind his neck and I'm like... What the hell is he going to do? He pulls from the nape of his neck up and it's the fucking Wolverine mask. And he's finally wearing the mask, the yellow one from the comic books. And I was like, yes. And then, and and then the, Ryan Reynolds the looks at him and like, goes, do you only wear this for special occasions? Yeah. Because <laughs> he hasn't because seen him wear it before. We've had like eight movies so far with Wolverine, Hugh Jackman specifically you know Wolverine. And never they, has he worn the mask. Because he's so good looking. Well, it's not that. It's just because I think that back in the day, they were like, if we use the mask, it might look stupid because the CGI was wasn't good enough back then. Like, because that mask mm. is CGI. You do know that. Oh. He pulls it over and that's a, like Deadpool's oh. mask like doesn't, it moves like a CGI and the eyes move CGI. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, that's, I think, I think that's how they do it. So it was so good. I wonder if he even films a lot, Ryan Reynolds. Like uh, he'll like do voiceovers when somebody's in yeah. the bodysuit. Yes, because a lot of the time his stunt double's probably doing all the fighting. And 100%. He's doing, yeah, I mean, can't imagine but Ryan Reynolds. But he said, I listened shit. to a podcast and he said he learned the dance, the NSYNC dance and did the dance. That was him. But that's not him in the movie because that's a dancer. Him. That is 100% a no, dancer. No, he said The way that him. guy moves, that's a dancer. He said it was him. He did. I think he's lying. Do you? Just like The Rock says I... he makes his own tequila. I don't think you make your own tequila, mate. I think you did a photo shoot in a, what's that, uh, aloe vera plantation. Don't they make it from aloe vera? No. Is it aloe vera? What's the plant they use for no, tequila? Agave. Agave. Sorry, my Jesus bad. Bunny. Aloe vera. <laughs> Guys, never ever check facts with us. Like we talk absolute <laughs> bullshit. No, we, no, this. you mean check facts? Don't check. not check facts. Don't check. You can't facts. even explain the fact checking thing. <laughs> but I'm serious. Like it's a problem. Like yeah. it's a problem. It's a problem. We are a problem. Problematic, as they say. Anyway, talking of fact checks, yeah. how's your TikTok going? Are you enjoying TikTok right now? Are you enjoying your algorithm? It's just like it's so hit and miss. Like the other day, I posted a video of me and Rocket playing. Well, your like, algorithm, that stuff you like to watch right now on TikTok. Oh, I thought you were talking about my videos. No. Oh, am I enjoying TikTok? Like watching it? Yes, yeah, and like what's yeah, happening? There's too much violent stuff going on on TikTok. Like because really? I get like I watch one news segment about someone stabbing someone, and then mm. suddenly like my entire feed is about like violent crime happening in the UK, and I'm like, I don't want to see this. I literally yeah. watched one video for ten seconds, mm. and then suddenly my whole feed is like another gang-related crime in the UK. Or I see that another woman stabbing. now. That woman that is um goes out with that model who cooks. Her. Nara Smith. Nara Smith. Dude, watched, it's hilarious, her it, stuff. I, for some reason, it's a bit addictive. I've heard that she has a team. So she starts making stuff and then they finish making it. Because she's wearing like a Moschino dress that she can't risk getting shit on it. So she literally does like, I'm going to bake this bread specially for a lucky blue, my husband. And then like she'll she dip out and then voice, all though, of her that I could listen team to her voice make and it. fall asleep. Just I know it's like it is a bit of a joke like when she makes the homemade sun cream I'm like you need to fucking calm down love <laughs> it's she's mad like it's 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 so funny it is a turn off for me a tiktok turn off but it's also really weirdly addictive it's a turn off and a turn on yeah not a turn on but you know but isn't that weird and, and since watching it with you it's yeah. like my phone is heard and then like <laughs> plays her the gossip is the stuff that gets me on tiktok a lot of the time do you know Madeline Argy is yeah she's like a the the girl that dated Central C. Yeah. Central C is like basically messed her she around. She speaks absolute shit. <laughs> I know, but she she's does. Like, a bit like Alex Earl, right? Alex Earl was like the queen yeah, of TikTok for so long. She is hot. Yeah. But actually, she's hot. She's got a hot body. Yeah. You know who I think is really hot? I'm looking for a boy in finance. I think she's fit. With a trust fund. Yeah. 6'5". Blue eyes. That's you, isn't it? That is, baby. I'm not 6'5". No, five, your brother's 6'5", though. No, he's 6'3". How dare Oh, you? okay. How very dare But... Talking of, yeah, I think talking of TikTok. Yeah. 
And talking of social media. Oh. Britney's come off Instagram. Who fucking cares? I <laughs> care. And guess what? Guess who's bought the rights to her book to turn it into a movie? Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. Because she fucking buys every yeah. rights to make everything it's, into a no, movie. No, she's d- done something with Paramount. Let me she's fact check. She's literally Reese Witherspoon. This. Re- yeah, fact check. Re- Reese Witherspoon, right, is a conniving little person. And do you know why? I, I like Reese Witherspoon and I think she's an amazing actress. My only grievance is that I've seen is in COVID, right? Mm-hmm. She started a business where she started a book club. Reese Witherspoon makes this book club during COVID. Everyone starts joining it. Right. It becomes so popular that if she's going to suggest or read a book with her group of people that she's cultivated, this huge audience, she makes you sign a document, right? So if you've written a book and you want it to become part of Reese Witherspoon's book club, the document that you sign states that she has the rights to turn your book into a movie, the sole rights. Wow. And a lot of people in COVID to make a bit of extra cash and whatever, to make book sales, would sign that document. And then Reese Witherspoon has started now bringing out the movies of the books and people are going, oh, but I didn't know what I was signing. And she's like, you signed it, mate. I get to make it into a movie. And then she's making millions oh, wait, of these but movies. but has she been hated by that? I think that it's received some negative press for like, pray- I know people are saying preying on the vulnerable because I'm going to need to be fact-checked on this probably. We'll have a cheeky look. But it's like, basically she was like, look, I've got this really popular book club. Like Oprah has a book club that's super popular as well. Like She's got yeah. that sticker, like Oprah approved on, on books. So it really does add value to your book and people wow. will buy it if it's like Reese Witherspoon approved. Talking of a book, this one. It ends with us, Colleen The one Hoover. that's turning into a movie. They've turned it into a movie. Justin Mother Flippin' Baldoni. Yeah, he's he does the production and, and the lead. And he's the lead. And the girl. Blake Lively, Blake baby. Mother Flippin' Lively. And it's Lively. doing so well. But this book, like, there's, they're getting loads of creators to talk about it and go, like, it got me back into reading. Is that what you're doing right now? Are you a creator so, that's being paid to talk about this? No, no, no. Are we about it's to just, go sponsored out? I went and I saw this on the... I was like, oh, I'd like to read that book instead of, like, listening. Because I was listening to the audiobook on Spotify and the girl's voice was so irritating. I don't understand how some people can listen to audiobooks. Shit. It's like, and then I did it. Is it the person that wrote it? No. Okay, because a lot of people like it's do their narrated own book by readings. somebody that isn't the same person. So they're literally a hired voice actor, and the voice is crap. It's just it's very like monotone. And then I Why did this, you... and then I did that. Oh, wow, that must and be da, really... da, da, da. Well, it must be the the person who wrote the book. That must be the voice they chose, so they must like it. Yeah, but I mean. Come on, you've literally, I had to Do go and buy it. People? Maybe they did it on purpose. Like, this is so bad, I have to go and buy the book. <laughs> I have to go and read it and watch the movie. But I tell you what's a very, very good audiobook is Matthew... Um, McConaughey. Not Matthew McConaughey. Oh. That's a great book, but... The Green something. Yeah. The Matthew Perry. Oh, book. yeah, yeah, the one about the Because he actually talks about it himself. He's a bit stiff at the beginning, and then you can hear him slurring a little bit because obviously his addictions... But it's a very good book. I was hooked. You it were hooked. Like it's the only it thing you spoke about I like, like a went week. running and I was like, instead of listening to Peloton, I'm putting Matthew Perry and he's like, yeah. I'm running, like really being fit, hitting my third mile. And he's like, and then I did drugs again and then relapsed. And, it, and I was like, literally like, why am I listening to this while I'm running? This is To be mad. fair, I listen to podcasts while I'm working out. And sometimes they're really not. Sometimes I'm in the middle of doing like a pull-up and then they tell a joke and I start laughing in my pull-up. So people, <laughs> people in the gym are looking at me and I'm like laughing while I'm like going down from a pull-up. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's carnage. I, d- I really want to find Tom Segura's book because I've been looking for it. Every time I go to Maybe you should start. Well, maybe I should start a book club. Actually, I tell you who has a book club. We do too much already. I know. Sorry. Let's not add another thing to our arsenal. <laughs> I really do like reading, though. It's very therapeutic, even though we get into bed and we watch a movie. Just we need let to it stop be the that. habit. Let it be that. Let you, it be therapeutic. Don't start a you fucking need to book go, club. You need to grab your phone and you need to swipe up and watch your gaming videos. And I need to grab my book and read instead of us putting something on the television. I do enjoy gaming videos but you yeah. know like it's just one of those things like the esports world cup's on right now we'll talk uh, a little yeah. bit about, more about that maybe in our next episode but uh it's carnage and i so, love it going back to the britney thing yeah britney sorry she's Universal, come off social media what's happened so she's come off social media because an artist <laughs> fact check oh my god are, you um, gonna fa- are we gonna fact this is literally the episode of fact checking what's going on i know Go on. um an artist did lucky and she basically put on... Did, oh, and she's a lucky... Yeah. And basically, 
yeah. redid it or something. I haven't actually even looked at it. I just saw a little bit of drama about it. And then Britney put a horrendous tweet out. Being like, like this girl basically covered I used Lucky. to love. I used to love this girl as an artist and she's literally done this and it's and horrible. And stolen her music. And she didn't ask permission for this. I didn't know about this. And then the girl replied, like, yeah, I did ask permission. What are you talking about? And then she was like, I've been hacked. This wasn't me. Oh. I didn't say <laughs> Oh my and god! And then Britney's like, I've, I've deleted hacked. my Instagram, <laughs> so she's deleted her Instagram. This fucking bitch, Halsey. No, Halsey. Yeah, Halsey shared everything with Britney before Britney Sp- and got the approval with Britney Spears before its release. And then Britney was like, I can't believe Halsey has done this. She made me look so stupid. She's broken my heart. And then she said that she was hacked. And then Halsey was like, I did ask you. Here's the proof. And then Britney's like, I've been hacked. <laughs> Someone changed my password. Quick. Literally. Oh, no. It's embarrassing. Yeah, I sent a shot to shot treatment, apparently. That's what she did. Oh, man. Like, Brit, like, what is going on, mate? Like, every time she kind of seems like she's turning a corner, something else batshit crazy comes out on social media. And I'm like, oh. Universal have bought her rights to turn her book into a biopic. Wow, that must have been. And she's working on it with them. Which is going to be... She's working on it with she's them. She's going to work Biopic. With them. Does that mean that she's in it? Or does that mean it's basically like no. a movie? They're going to have to her. cast someone. And, and Who would play a good Britney oh, Spears? Oh, good shout. Who would be Maybe a good Maybe she's got Reese Witherspoon. No, she's too old. Yeah, you're going to need like a young up and coming. <gasps> <gasps> no, you're going to say Sydney, Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> we both we looked both at like, each other. She's, Sydney her, Sweeney. she's too chesty, mate. And can she dance? Britney had chest, a little bit of chest. Sydney Sweeney has chest. Britney has chest. But she then Sydney got a boob job, chest. didn't she? Huh? Britney did get a boob job. Britney got a boob job? Yeah. Oh, Sydney Sweeney has a huge rack, babe. Like, you don't understand. Sydney Sweeney for the win. Sydney or the other, the other singer that's like everyone relates her to. She's a dancer. She was a dancer. Tate McRae. Yes. Tate McRae looks nothing like her, though. That's the problem. Yeah, but they, by, Amy Winehouse's look nothing like her. Really? Yeah. Then, yeah, Tate McRae could probably do it. Um, I mean, yeah, I was thinking something along the lines of, like, I don't know, like Madison Beer, kind of that lot. I mean, they're all young pop stars, right? Mm. Maybe. Madison Beer could be a young Megan Fox. Yeah, 100%. Do you know what I mean? She looks very fit. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, <laughs> one time, the book, wasn't if it you one watched time, it was like, Woman in it... Me, if you, if you read it, if you read The Woman in Me, the Britney Spears the Woman book, it is so badly written. And Michelle Williams does the audiobook. Michelle Willems. Yeah. And it's just very, it's like, I go to the studio and Kevin Federline is there smoking a joint and says he wants a divorce. And he's with my bouncers and I'm here with his two babies and I leave and then we file for a divorce. The next chapter, literally that is the book. <laughs> and it's, that is it's, so it's boring. very basic. I fell and asleep it's very, that. it's very, and she's just like, me and Justin got pregnant. He made me have an abortion. I didn't like it. <laughs> Next chapter. <laughs> oh my that is gosh. what the book is like. Britney Spears, sort it out, mate. Because we need some, we, we need, need some positive more news depth. from you. You know, like I said last night, I want more in-depth conversations with you, Barney Banks. I want Britney to give me more depth. In-depth conversation. There you go. We can talk about toenails later. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. Fabulous. Oh my God, I heard something horrendous the other day. No, don't And we'll say finish it. on this. Okay. Are you ready? I found out that someone's kink is toenails? biting their partner's toenails. Who is like, this? No, did no, you no. Have this sex is... with a prostitute and she liked that. She liked biting your toenails. Where did that come from? <laughs> no. Well, where did the toenail biting sexual. Because in our next episode, we're going to do a segment about kinks and it's very funny. And I, I saw don't one. I know this. And I saw one. <laughs> and basically, one of them is this girl likes to bite her partner's, a guy's, toenails. Right? And oh. if she gets a good one... After he's played football. If she gets a good one and it takes, like, the whole nail, she then uses it as a toothpick for the rest of the night. Ah! Oh, my God, I'm with that! I love you all. And I love you too, sometimes. Don't look at my toenails. You're disgusting. So- sometimes. And, uh, I... Right, that's going in the uh, list of things Barney said today that I'm going to be angry about later and we're oh, laying in bed and arguing about it. it. <laughs> love you guys. Uh, remember, don't tell mum. And... You know, we love you loads. Should you I leave? look great today. Should I leave? No, it was fine. You don't have anything to say? I don't think I have anything to say about, you know, nothing that you don't already know, other than the fact that I roughhoused with Rocket the other day and I was really worried that I actually like really hurt him, but it was fine. You 
you've got to be careful. And I rugby tackled him and he kind of moved the pillow out of the way as I went in. So I like actually rugby tackled him. And he was, you could see his head go like whiplash and go back. I was like, <gasps> and then he, but then he starts laughing. So I was like, okay, he's still alive. Okay. There you go. Shh, don't tell mum. <laughs> don't tell mum. <laughs> Bye-bye.